Hi, I'm Carrie. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about how to narrate a memoir. Okay, so one of the genres that I like to work in in voiceover is narrating audiobooks. And I have had the pleasure of, uh, among the audiobooks that I've narrated, I've done three first person memoirs. And I think that approaching them is a little bit different than approaching other kinds of books. And so I thought I would lay out my thoughts on that if you happen to find yourself in the position of being offered a memoir to narrate. While a memoir is technically nonfiction, I approach them performance-wise more like I would approach a first-person point of view fiction book. When you're reading fiction, you should read the entire book ahead of time to make sure that there's no surprises at the end if all of a sudden it says, uh, she said with her southern accent, uh, and you haven't given her a southern accent through the whole book, uh, that's going to be quite a time-consuming thing to fix. Um, plus, you need to understand the context. Uh, the, the character is going through if there's kind of a secret that the character knows and you find out at the end you need to know all these those things to give the read the proper subtext on a nonfiction book, I tend to read each section beforehand, but a fiction book, really, you need to read it ahead of time. And what I do is I even create a chart of the characters, who they are, uh, what what kind of a way they speak, what are their personality traits, that kind of thing. With a first-person memoir, I also read the whole thing first, and there still is some character work to be done in a first-person memoir. Not as much, typically, as in a, a work of complete fiction, but it is pretty common for memoir writers to recount certain conversations that they've had with other people in their lives, and you do have to bring those conversations to life. I think that the character voices that you create for a memoir need to be a little bit more subtle than the voices that you would create in a complete work of fiction, because these are real people. These are real conversations conversations that are being recounted and you you don't ever want to border on being caricaturish when you are representing a real person. The other interesting thing about the memoirs that I've done is that I've been able to communicate with the authors themselves. So these are the women who have written their stories down and have given me the responsibility of sharing their story with the world, which I take very seriously. And, you know, people who write memoirs, these can be very emotional stories that they are telling. So I feel like there's an extra level of care that needs to be given to make sure that you are treating the content appropriately. The other thing about memoirs is that often they are about difficult subjects and about people overcoming the difficulties in their lives. So ultimately a happy story, but you do have to get through the tough parts. So what prompted me making this video even is that I was recently recording a memoir. It is uh, um, one of the memoirs of Yasin Hall. Uh, it is called Beyond the Love Curse, available on Audible. Check out the link in the description. And I had an emotional moment where I had to stop and kind of take stock. And, and while I was just kind of bringing the emotions back down to base level, I just some thoughts occurred to me. So I just kind of expounded on them. And that's what made me think like, hey, maybe I should put this out in the world for people to see it might be helpful if you are approaching a memoir yourself. So here's a little behind the scenes look at Yasin Hall's Beyond the Love Curse. At the airport, I waved with my eyes full of tears at my boys, promising them I'd be back in a year. Mm. Oh man, a year is a long time. So sometimes, um, this one isn't too bad, but sometimes I do get, I have to take a break because, uh, you know, people write memoirs typically because they have pretty sad stories to tell sometimes. I mean, they're, they're good stories in the end because they are stories of how they overcame their struggles. But obviously they describe their struggles in some detail and it can be very personal and very emotional. And certainly fiction can be the same, but the difference here is that this is a real person. This really happened to her. And I am, am because I am trying to embody what she's saying in this first person narrative it can be a very emotional experience and it's funny because sometimes it hits me 
when I just don't even really expect it like it did just then. Um, you know, I, ca I can't help but think about – she talks about leaving her children for a year. I can't help but think about leaving my children for a year and how incredibly painful that had to be. Um, what a choice to have to make. So, yeah, so sometimes I got to take a little break and um, back up. I mean, I, I, I think it's good to – allow that emotion to be expressed in the read. Obviously, you, you don't want to break down in tears in an audiobook, but allowing that sadness to show up in your voice, absolutely appropriate and, and really necessary to get the point across. I actually love the experience. The experience of doing an audiobook, you will never um, become so invested and so engaged with the book unless you are reading it and performing it as an audiobook and trying to express what the author's trying to express. It's a completely different experience than just reading it for your own pleasure. It's much more deep and personal and affecting. Uh, and that is, honestly, that's really why I love it. I've always loved reading anyways. And to have this opportunity to express this woman's deepest thoughts and emotions and to help her tell her story of these terrible things that happened to her, it is a privilege and an honor. And I take it very seriously as a result. Uh, of course, I when I read fiction, I also take it very seriously and professionally. But I think that there is – when it's a memoir – when the person is alive, when you've had communications with the person, when it's a, it's a first-person narrative of their life, there is an extra level there of responsibility in doing that content justice. And I take that very seriously. Okay, now that emotions are back to ground zero, let's keep going. Oh, this next one is hard, too. <sighs> I'm not sure if I can read this, actually. I might need a minute. Let me see if I can do it. <clears throat> Taking off on a plane and leaving my children behind felt like someone pulled all of my limbs apart slowly in agonizing pain, and I died inside. I used all that pain to rebuild myself. The judge ordered therapy for myself and my daughter. Hesitant and left with no other option, I sat in front of a therapist for the first time in my life, filled with anger, hurt, a failure as a mother, wife, and as a woman. I had reached rock bottom. That's all I have for you today, and I hope it was helpful. If you liked it, hit the like button, and please do consider subscribing to my channel. I'd appreciate it. See you next time. Yeah.